Hey, what's going on everyone? Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. In this video, I am going to show you what I believe to be the best white background program that you can use for eBay, Mercari, Poshmark. You could even use it for YouTube if you're trying to make good thumbnails or whatever other you know, need that you have to get a white background uh, onto your photos. It really uh, is something that could help you a lot, could help you make sales uh, and help you make those sales faster uh, by making that item pop. Now, uh, it's not PhotoFuse. That's not the program I'm going to recommend here. For those of you who have been following me for a while, I have been talking about PhotoFuse for a few years. Uh, I'm going to show it to you, though, uh, in an example and compare it to eBay's white background program that came out uh, after I had been using PhotoFuse for a while. And then I'm going to compare that to uh, an even newer program, which I think is far superior and it is free. This video, by the way, is not sponsored at all. The, the company whose uh, product that I'm going to recommend here has no idea that I'm making this video, did not ask me to make the video. There's no affiliate uh, links, commissions, anything like that. Uh, it's just purely based on my experience and use of it and uh, comparisons with uh, other programs uh, over the years. So uh, the example item that I'm going to use here is one of Mrs. Primetime's jewelry pieces, uh, this brooch of this macaw. And I chose it because it's nice and bright and uh, colorful and it's small, easy to work with and, uh, you know, easy to photograph. So Mrs. Primetime originally took a photograph of this inside of a light box that I showed in a prior video. Now, keep in mind that just because the item is photographed in a light box does not mean that once you upload it onto eBay or any other reselling platform, that it's automatically going to have a nice white background. There's normally going to be some degree of difference. So let me show you by sharing my screen what it actually uh, looks like uh, or looked like in the original version when we originally took the picture before applying any type of white background to it. I'm going to show you this based on uh, a listing. Mrs. Primetime has this listed right now, but I uploaded a couple images just to make sure I could uh, show you different versions of it and you know, expand it with the Zoom feature on eBay. So let me share my screen here for uh, a moment. And what you're going to see here, this is the original version. You can see that there's gray behind it. Now, if you just put it up like that, would it still sell eventually? Yeah, it probably would. Um, but it looks, again, much nicer and you increase the chance of selling it if you can make it look like this. This is much better. It looks more professional. You know, it looks like something that, uh, you know, came out of a catalog or something. It really looks nice. Uh, you know, whereas this, unfortunately, you have this contrast between, you know, what is in um, the original image that we took. And then here you could see on the left and right, there's these white columns. That's part of eBay's, um, you know, they're just natural white background that they just have. And if your image doesn't fill it all up, fill up that whole space, then you're going to have these bars uh, around it, which you don't uh, want. So let's go into PhotoFuse uh, for a moment. And let me show you what would happen if we use that program with this item? Because I think in showing you some of the problems with it, it's going to better help you see what the advantage is of the newer program that I am recommending you to uh, use going forward. So this is PhotoFuse. By the way, this is the desktop version of PhotoFuse, obviously. Uh, there is an app version of it, though, that you can use as well. So I'm going to go here and just we're just going to upload the one photo. So I'm just going to go over here. I'm going to find it and we're going to open it up here. And as you can see, it automatically selected it. And you can see that yellow that's around it. What that's doing, it's trying to select out the image and then extract it from the rest of it. But the problem here is that there's what I would call overspill. That yellow is going around the edges and the borders of the items, which could cause problems in that it could retain some of that there and leave shadows behind. And uh, some of it could be okay. It could be something you could deal with, but sometimes it could really look unsightly. 
Now you'll see there that it automatically selected the image. For those of you who've been using PhotoFuse and are not aware uh, how to do that, uh, you just go here to manage the faults and you click uh, right there where it says auto highlight. So it automatically highlights it. I'm gonna thank Matt Granger for telling me about that. He's a subscriber to uh, the channel and um, he, he let me know about that feature when it came out and it's still in beta. Uh, so. But as is true with many you know, services and products in beta, there's you know, sometimes issues with it. So what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna click finish and it's gonna spin around for a little bit. And this is another slight flaw with photo views is that it does, you know, it doesn't take a long time, a super long time, but there is a little bit of a delay. And if you're impatient and you just want things to move along faster, you know, this could be a potential issue, especially if you have a lot of images to go through. Now, uh, right here, um, it might be difficult to tell, but I'm going to make it bigger in just a moment so you could see. But uh, it, you know, it did apply a white background to it. But uh, you'll see here. Let me let me bring it over here. It's the same image that you're seeing there. Look over here. You could see it leaves these shadows behind, and particularly towards the bottom of it. Now, sometimes you know shadows could look nice, and so sometimes it's a matter of personal preference. But if what you're really striving for is that pure white background this is really going to frustrate you. Now, what you could do is you could just click it, go back into it, and you could clear it. And then what you could start doing is you could just start selecting it yourself. And when you start using it like this, it moves from an automated program to what we would call a semi-automated program in which you're providing some input. And then afterwards, once you, you know, select what you wanna select, it will just automatically do the rest of it for you. Now, I'm gonna show you another problem with this is that, see, you can see here as I'm selecting it, it's still, it's doing an okay job getting to the borders, but we still have overspill here. We have overspill here. We have some slight overspill on the bottom. And then if you're not careful, especially if you're doing this late at night, you could think that you selected certain parts. Like you could see here, we have some spaces, especially in these red spots here. Uh, and then on the bottom with the purple, and then when you click finish, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see that those spots, since they weren't actually selected, they're going to show up as white blotches. And you could accidentally upload that and now it's gonna look like you have a defective item and you might not even realize it and then your item's sitting there for a while. So you have to really be careful. Now we could go back into it and we could correct this stuff. Uh, so we could just go and you know go right over that, go right over that, but you could see that's leading to some more overspill. Uh, we could shorten this circle, by the way, if we want to make it smaller to make some more fine-tuned corrections. You know, we could go over here and we got to hit the, uh, if we want to get rid of it, we have to hit the eraser. So we hit the eraser and we just start trimming it down, trimming it down. But as you can see here, now I'll just give you an example. If I'm going along here and I'm trying to trim, what could happen is that you start accidentally um, knocking some of the actual item out. And I'll just make it a little bigger just for effect so you could see what would happen is that now if I hit the finish button, it is going to basically chop the top of the parrot's head off there. You're, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna capture it. So now the problem with your image is going to be uh, that you're gonna have just a different part of it that's, um, uh, that's missing. And so the problem with this is that you could wind up going back and forth between using the eraser, using the select tool. You could see here, see that up top? It's it's defective there now. It looks defective. So, uh, you know, because the top of that, the head is gone. So, you know, and this is just one image. So imagine if you had an item that you had to apply this to and you're dealing with, you know, let's say six images or even imagine if it was 12 images on eBay. It could be a nightmare and be super time consuming. Like, look what you would have to do down here to get all of this trim out, I mean, you really have to take your time. You have to have a steady hand and you have to really try. And sometimes it's difficult to see exactly what you want to trim out there. And it's just, you know, it could just take a very long time to do. So we're going to get out of photo fuse here for, uh, for a moment. And, um, that's why, you know, another solution is really needed. Now, after, uh, I've been using PhotoFuse for a while, and, and eBay started emphasizing, by the way, the need for white backgrounds. 
Um, you know, there's a thought that they do give preference to images with white backgrounds in their uh, algorithm. As you know, Amazon uh, strongly prefers white backgrounds as well. So eBay's really been emphasizing this and they came out with their own free, uh, by the way, PhotoFuse is, is free. Um, there, like many of these things, there's a paid version and a non-paid version. So, but uh, uh, eBay's white background program uh, is free. And to use it, you have to go into the uh, drafts section. And I'll show you what that would look like and what it would do uh, with the image. So let me make sure that I don't forget to share my screen with you here. And I'm going to bring up a little presentation here for you. And let me hide this so you could see things better. But uh, this is within eBay's uh, drafts program. And this is specifically though within the app, the white background program is not within the desktop version. So to, to access it, you have to upload your uh, image, bring it into this, uh, this draft part of the app, right in the photos part. And then you're going to want to click that button down there. That is your uh, white background program. So you click that. And it allows you to frame your item. So let's say you maybe had something distracting around it. You could just trim around it to focus uh, the program into what it is that you want the white background to come behind. And then what happens is it will just apply the white uh, background. But as you could see here, while it does have white around the, uh, around the top and stuff, it, it left a whole big glob of gray right on the bottom. And this, unlike the PhotoFuse program, does not look like some subtle type of shadow that you could just leave behind. This really actually looks bad. Now, yes, you could refine the photo with the brush and eraser if you want to, but it leaves you with the same exact problem that you had with PhotoFuse and that it's very time consuming. So what we really need is something that's reliable, consistent, and automated that just, you could just bring the photo in and just, it's very good at just making those clear uh, distinctions between what is um, the item and what is not. And that leads me to photo room. Uh, so uh, this was something that was mentioned to me by a, a subscriber on the channel in the comment section one. So it just goes, goes to show, I do appreciate all of your comments. And I ex I've experimented with so many different white background programs, but this one uh, I really love. So you can see it right there. Uh, I know it's available for uh, Apple. And so I use it on my iPhone. You'll have to look to see if it's available for other uh, smartphones, but, uh, and, and there is not, as of now, there's not a desktop uh, version for it. So it is an app. And so uh, you can see here that uh, when you open it up, it's going to bring you to these, uh, you know, this template page here. And you want to hit that, that, big circular button there. Uh, that will allow you to access your photos. And as you can see there, I have a picture of uh, Daisy there for you because when I do these types of videos, I don't have Daisy walking around and people always say to miss Daisy. So I figured this was a fun way to bring Daisy into these types of videos. Uh, for you. So this, that's one of, that's a picture of her and her big eyes after she gets a, a haircut, they put a little fresh bow tie on her and a bandana. So that's her, her latest one, everyone. There's a little uh, Daisy haircut update for everybody. But, uh, uh, so uh, you can see there it says you have allowed photo room to access only a limited selection of one uh, photo. There is a paid version of the app, which allows you to upload you know, multiple photos at once, and allows you to do some other bells and whistles. But again, this is a non-sponsored video and whether you wind up, you know, paying for a paid version or not, that, you know, that's neither here nor there for me. Um, if, you know, it's totally your personal preference, but my main point is that you can still use everything you need to for free here. Okay. So you're going to click add more photos and then you're going to click that button there and it says select more photos. So you're going to find your image, which there's the macaw. You're going to highlight it. It'll bring up a little uh, check mark there when you click it. So just you know, once you click it and you're going to hit done and then it's just going to you know, bring it up and then you're just going to select the image. So just click it. And once you click it, it's just going to, and there's the by the way, just to remind you, that's the original version of what Photo Room is, is dealing with. And it's the same one that I gave to eBay and it's the same one I gave to PhotoFuse. So they're, we're comparing them with the same exact standard. What's going to happen is you're going to see this bar come and it's just going to go up and down one or uh, usually like two times and it's going to scan the item. It is faster than uh, photo views. And all this, all these are screenshots from my phone just so I could enlarge it for you and show it to you better here on the, uh, on the computer. And there's 
what comes out there. And there's some things around that I'll explain to you here in a, in a second. But you can see on the bottom left, it says photo room. That's one of the things that if you have the paid version, it will take that out. Now you could go and clip it out if you want, like cut and paste some white onto it. Or you could often just trim your item around it and get rid of the thing that says uh, photo room uh, on it. So uh, now if you want to then take this and then just quickly transfer it somewhere else, you just click that up arrow and what's gonna happen is it's gonna bring all these selections on the bottom of your phone. I already selected one, which is OneDrive, and that's where I just automatically upload my photos to so that they're available on all of my devices at once. So I love that. It's just basically a cloud program for Microsoft, but you could use whatever you want. It'll bring up all your apps. It'll bring up your email. You could save it to your phone. Like there's all sorts of different things that you could do. It just brings up pretty much all your apps, whatever you could send it to, whatever app you could use to send it to, it'll be available to you. And uh, so just you know, click whatever you wanna upload it to. For me, again, it's upload to OneDrive and there you go. That's the image that I wound up uh, getting there. So I'm going to get out of there. Hold on, let me get back to the main screen there. Okay, so um, yeah. It is an awesome program. I mean, I love it. And just to add to the sh screen again, and just to bring everything back, this is the photo fuse version. That's the original version. And I just showed you the eBay version, which had that big glob. And this is the nice image that we want. Uh, the only instance in which I have noticed a problem with photo room, again, no program is perfect, is with some of Mrs. Primetime's uh, silverish uh, jewelry pieces that have a glare on it. Uh, sometimes if it's really fine and really thin and there's like a lot of pieces, there's like a lot of complexity to it, uh, it might miss one of the strands, like a part of one of the strands. And so you got to be careful with those types of items. And that's an instance where you might want something that's semi-automated like PhotoFuse to go in where you can manually select parts of it. Um, but besides that, I mean, for the items that I usually, you know, are dealing with, which is, you know, vintage and collectible items, hard goods, um, besides those shiny jewelry, some, some, some shiny jewelry pieces, I, we have not had any problem with it. I absolutely love it. it. It's just been a great program. So again, I highly suggest it. And uh, I want to emphasize again, this is um, a, a non-paid, non-sponsored uh, endorsement uh, for me uh, of this of this program. So try it out, uh, use it and let me know, uh, what you think and compare it to whatever it is that you are using. And let me know, uh, you know, what you think, uh, it's been in terms of a success for you, uh, or not in the, um, uh, in that comment section, but I do really think you're going to like it. If you like another program, feel free to share that as well. Um, you know, this, this channel is really a <coughs> community resource for people. So uh, you know, again, if there's something else you, you want to mention, feel free to do that. Uh, programming notes, don't forget, make sure you come by tomorrow night to my live show. It's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're ending off the year with a bing. Joey Bada Bing, the USPS mailman who sells on eBay. He's a high energy guy. It's going to be a lot of fun. Great show. Uh, I, I think we're going to have tomorrow. Uh, so make sure you come on by for that. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see everyone at the next video. Take care.